Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Creating Wealth with the one and only Robert G. Allen. How are you doing, Rob? I'm doing awesome. You see around the world, you see so much opportunity. It's just like, it's just uh, unbelievable <laughs> how many ways there are to create wealth. That's what this is all about, creating wealth, right? <laughs> That's true. And yeah, so today we're going to be answering one of the questions that we've been getting on social media about creativity in real estate. So the first question is, why is creativity so crucial when making deals in real estate? Let's uh, look at a piano keyboard. And most realtors today only have one note on the keyboard. And that note is cash, 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 <laughs> good credit, good job, good, you know, but what if you don't have that one note? So creativity is playing all 52 keys. It's, it's having the, the, the ability to see the solutions to the seller's problem in many different ways. And so most, most realtors, I'd say 90, 95% of realtors have been trained over the last 10, 15 years that it, it's easy to get a brand new mortgage. A mortgage means you gotta go to a bank. The bank is gonna require you to have those four things, cash, credit, cash flow, and collateral. Those four C's, if you don't have those, then you're out, you're out of the game. But what if you, if you, don't, if you don't have those, then you need to have what I call the other, the other C's. That's creativity, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's character, that's chutzpah, that's a C word, that's, uh, that's uh, commitment. You know, these are, these are internal things. So that means your, your first job is find out what the seller's problem is. Try to solve that problem. It, we're using the creative non-use of cash. Now, most, most sellers, they want cash. They want their price, they want their terms, that's it. Uh, most realtors have gotten the listing. How do they get the listing? They've been out there trying to find a seller and they've promised the seller that they would get the best price and the best terms, all cash. They'd find a strong buyer, right? Well, unfortunately, that's only maybe 10% of the people who want to buy real estate. So if you're in the 90% and you got a little ding on your credit, and you got uh, a little, you know, your down payment is not quite there, you know, you're, you're, you don't have a financial statement, your job is kind of iffy, then you have to do, the, the first job is to look for the highly motivated seller. And there's only one out of, out of 100 who are really highly motivated. And, and that means they have a reason, a problem that they're trying to solve. And if you can solve that problem for them where they get to get what they want and you get to get in without you know, some of the strength that you would normally see, then, then, you, then you can win. You can creatively f come up with a solution. Now, most realtors, they're not creative. And, and that's not a knock on them. It's like, you know, when you go to the bank, the bank is going to require all these, you know, strengths. So don't bring a client that's not strong. But what if you have a friend of yours and you're trying to help that friend of yours get into real estate and you know that uh, they don't have a lot of cash, not a credit. Do you tell them, I'm sorry, you can't do it? If you're a creative real estate agent, you're going to do exactly what I'm telling you. You're going to look for a highly motivated seller and then you're going to try to solve that seller's problem without the use of lots of lots of strength. The, for example, there are about 20% of the houses that are out there that are free and clear. In other words, the banker is not going to be necessary. And and uh, you could say to that seller, "Hey, your property's free and clear. Why don't you be the banker?" In other words, what are you going to do with your money? You're going to take the money that that this person is going to refinance, and you're going to take that money and sit it in the bank at one and a half percent, half of one percent interest. Uh, that's not a good return on your money. Why don't you be the bank? Why don't you carry the financing? Come up with a reasonable down payment, not 25% that the banker might require. Maybe you'll take 10%, you know, because they're going to live in it. And maybe you can carry some of that financing. Um, therefore, you get 6% on your money, you know, instead of half of 1%. So you actually would getting 12 times more by, by you being the bank. Now, if, if, if you don't want to carry that for 30 years, you know, so, the, so as a realtor, you'd want to, to say, well, we're going to put a balloon in here. We're going to say five years from now, they're going to have to refinance. But you'll have a chance to have equity build up. And therefore, what you've, what you've done with your, for your friend or your new client who is a little weaker, you've actually shown that, that, that seller how they could win for a period of time 
where your buyer could win, everybody wins, win, 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 and, and the seller and the, and the realtor still gets a commission. Mm -hmm. So if you got the creative side of you, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, real, real estate agent, <laughs> if you uh, have the, then, then it opens up the marketplace to more clients. And, and if you're a really creative realtor, you're gonna be in demand. People are gonna say somehow or other, he, he or she just figures out a way to get the clients into those real estate deals that ordinary, uncreative, um, one note on the piano kind of people. So my book, Nothing Down, which is uh, how to buy real estate with little or no money now, and talks about you know, dozens of techniques on how you do that. And of course, a book that I, that I give away for free, by the way, is called The Challenge. You know, just go down to my, uh, down in the, 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 link. the link down below <laughs> and, and get a copy of that so you can understand the, the way I think. Um, realtors don't usually like me. <laughs> you know, they, they don't. Well, let me tell you why. Ooh. Because I'm going to tell them that w the one note they're playing, uh, which is cash, 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 credit, 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 <laughs> cash flow, cash flow, cash flow, it'd be strong, 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 strong for your client. They're, I'm going to tell them that that's not the only way to buy real estate. And so people will come into a real estate office and they say, well, I just read Robert Allen's book, Nothing Down, <laughs> and I'm here to buy a property with nothing down. And the, and the realtors are going to go, well, that means there's, if there's nothing down, that means there's no commissions. Mm -hmm. uh, that's just the exact opposite. Of course there are going to be commissions because there's going to be cash in there. The buyer just comes in without cash. Mm -hmm. that, that doesn't mean there's no cash involved. It's just not the buyer's cash. And so the, the way you look at the deal creatively is to find where the cash is involved, how the seller can walk away with cash without this, the buyer coming up with cash on their part. And since most realtors are, unfor unfortunately, they're not creative, then when they hear the nothing down message, <laughs> they, they immediately get turned off and they say, no, that, that's not possible. Are you kidding me? Today, thousands of properties all across this country today will be bought with nothing down, where the seller will get into that property with absolutely zero down. I can't tell you how many hundreds and hundreds of people have told me over my career, Bob, I bought a property with nothing down, you know? And I'm gonna tell them, was it a good deal? I don't care if you buy it with nothing down. If it's a bad deal, don't buy it. You use creative real estate to make a good deal great, not to make a bad deal good. And this is where most people get, they, they mistake the, the, the nothing now message. Um, you want to make sure that, you, that when you use creative financing, you don't have to use all of your money, but it has to be a good deal. It has to be a deal that when you walk away from it, from the closing, you go, I'm so happy I bought that property. You, you, what happened in 2008, 2009, is people were bidding up the prices way above what they really were worth. They were buying a property, even sometimes nothing down, so that they could hope the property would you know, dramatically increase in value over the next five, 10 years. And unfortunately, the properties dropped in value 50%, just dr dramatically, because they weren't investing. They were speculating. So you use creative real estate to invest, to buy property so you can get more of it, not to buy the wrong kind of property that you get over, in over your head, you have negative cash flow, you don't, want a, you don't want an alligator. An alligator is when you buy that property and immediately to make the monthly payments, you have to go four, five hundred thousand dollars a month in negative cash flow. Not smart, don't do that. I'd rather you didn't buy at all than you bought with nothing down and ended up with, a, with an alligator, hoping to feed that alligator until it eats you alive. You wanna make sure you have cash flow. You step into a property, you buy it with little or no money down, you at least break even cash flow. Maybe, maybe a tiny bit negative for a period of time, but you got a strategy for fixing that over a period of time, so you get into the positive. You're raising the rent somehow. But anyway, um, most, most realtors, I'm hoping I'm talking to some realtors now, because what I'm doing is I'm creating more customers for you. I'm creating more people who want to buy real estate. When they come into your office, they're going to look for a creative realtor. And most likely, if you're the number one person in that office, you're creative. You've figured out a way to have more customers close on deals. And that's what creative real estate is all about. That's awesome. And yeah, I feel like most people, they do rely a lot on realtors for like getting just into the game of real estate. Uh, so what are some of the things that we should do as, as a regular person when we're looking for a creative realtor? How can we find them? Because there's so many out there that it's kind of hard to tell who is which. Um, first of all, 
I would ask, is that realtor an investor, him or herself? And most realtors are not. They're in the business to earn a 6% commission. And not only 6%, it's the broker has to share on some of that, and the broker's broker has to share on some of that. So usually you're walking away with a quarter of 6%. Oh. And, and so why would you, uh, which is what, 1.5%? Why would you work for 1.5%? Where if you, if you own the property, you'd be working for 94%. So realtors are, they, 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 they look at their, uh, their career as a job. And you don't want to work with somebody who is just a residential realtor. You want to work with an investment realtor. Why? Because they understand what you're trying to accomplish. They go, oh, you're looking for a deal. Well, I, I've just used up all of my money, you know. So, uh, yeah, I'll help you find your deals as an investor. Um, you, you're going to ask them, what's your portfolio look like? And you'll find that most realtors will tell you they may own their own home. They might not even own their own home. So is that the kind of person you want to coach you? Uh, wrong person. I'm sorry. Um, you want somebody who is, yeah, I have three properties myself. I'm renting them out. Therefore, they understand the game, right? Um, that's the first question you ask. The second question is, um, tell me about your most creative deal. Now, if they've been in the market for a year or two or three or more, then they've done a dozen transactions, two dozen transactions or more. Tell me about your most creative transaction. Um, when the seller came in uh, and said, I, I, need to buy my, I need to sell my property, and you had a client that was a little weaker in those four big C's that the banker always wants, cash, cash flow, credit, and collateral, they were, they were not the stellar client that everybody wants. How did you put a not stellar client into a deal. Show, tell me how you did that. And if they don't, if they don't have a story like that, they say, "Well, I usually take them to the bank." And 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 how many times does your seller or does your buyer not qualify? Well, you know, once out every three times they don't qualify. And if that's if they don't qualify, that means you weren't created to figure out how to solve the problem, right? So uh, that's the, that's the next question you ask. Tell me about your most creative real estate deal. Um, most, most uh, great creative realtors are going to be in the top five in their office. Yeah. So you, you ask them, you know, where, do you, where do you rank in this office? Now, a lot of times a real, realtor will be a beginner and they don't have a track record. So they've never done this before and they're just getting started. Do you really want to work with that person? Well, you could, you could. You could maybe train a beginning realtor. You could tell them, listen, this is the way they're going to try to teach you. They're going to try to teach you that one note on the piano, cash, 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 <laughs> you know, and I don't have cash, cash, cash. But let's work together. You show me the best options, and I will, and, and let's work together so we can make you my realtor. And eventually, they're going to become your buyer's broker. See, there are two kinds of uh, real estate agents. There are sellers, brokers, and buyer's brokers. That means a seller's broker is a person who represents the seller. And usually in, in every real estate transaction, especially through the real estate game, somebody represents seller, somebody represents the buyer. The buyer broker is trying to negotiate on your behalf. They're trying to find a best deal for you. Therefore, most people in the real estate game don't really understand that. They are trying to make the seller happy. And Eventually, you can train a realtor to be your buyer's broker, meaning they're looking for good deals only. They actually don't care how the seller deals. And, and it's not that they don't want the seller to, to be taken advantage of. It's just that let's the other realtor represent the seller. Uh, I'm going to represent the buyer. And therefore, you train them to look for good deals, to look for flexible sellers, to look for sellers who've got problems that it, it, what you're really looking for is not a property that you can buy with nothing on because it has a bad, because it's a bad property. You want a seller with a problem that's personal. A personal problem, not a property problem. Mm -hmm. So you're trying to train your realtor. I'm looking for people with personal problems who are required to be more flexible. Yeah, that might be better if I have cash, but frankly, w w um, what if, what if, um, what if they're trying to, to spread, spread the money amongst some heirs? 
and they really don't want their, their teenage son to end up with uh, grandma's you know, uh, $30,000 in cash, because you know what they're going to do with it. They're going to blow it. It's just, that's just the way it's going to happen. <laughs> you may want to set it up to, so it solves your, your, um, your buyer's problem. You might say to the, to the seller, maybe it's a family member, why don't we do uh, a note where the, where, the, where the grandson gets a monthly payment attached to it over a 10-year period of time? Mm -hmm. And therefore, they are not going to be tempted to go spend all the money. They have to force themselves to be budgeted. So you see, every, uh, every solution uh, can, be, can be designed to the perfect seller and buyer opportunities, right? Um, finally, the, 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 realist, the realtor, when they, when they become trained for them to be the kind of person that looks for deals for you, then you give them exclusivity. Up until that point, you're going to select mm, five realtors. You're going to go to five different offices. Um, you're going to sit down with, uh, to try to find an investor in each one of those offices, to try to tell them what you're looking for, to try to tell them that uh, if, if the deal is good, you can find the cash, uh, to try to teach them how, uh, and if they start sending you leads, then that's good. If you've got five people working for you, uh, eventually one of them is going to stand out amongst everybody else. And eventually they're going to start bringing you deals. They're going to be the kind of realtor you want to deal with. And then you become exclusive. You say to them, you're my exclusive realtor. Every time I do a deal, it's with you. Why? Because you're bringing me great deals. And if I find something that's listed with somebody else, I'm going to bring it to you. Um, I'm going to do what you would do for me. Uh, I want us to win together. And therefore, what happens, you have the, the realtor who, who realizes that they are a good source for referrals, uh, that every time that, that uh, you find some money for, the, the, if you found an investment partner with lots of cash, then, um, then your realtor is happy for you. you know, they're always passing good, good money sources to you. They are part of your team. Um, most of the time, the realtor is not part of your team. Uh, they... Like I said, most realtors don't like investors. They don't understand them, and they don't like creative investors. <laughs> they, they, they even hate us, right? And so don't, don't play that game. Find somebody who loves you. That's amazing. And yeah, I feel like having someone that is truly invested in having the best profit for you as an investor, that is key in becoming a successful real estate investor. Um, so one of the other questions that we got is that, if, let's say that I'm a realtor, what are some of the tips that you could give me so I can be more creative with my clients? Um, be a problem solver. Uh, to be a creative realtor means you solve people's problems. And sometimes they think the only way to solve a problem is to give them cash. Mm -hmm. and that's not so. That's not true. Uh, there are a lot of reasons why people want to sell with little or no money down. Um, sometimes they, sometimes, for example, they have a, a, they've got a new job in another city, and um, they, they are interested in, in selling their property. But w w there may be part of them that wants to be an investor. So why would they sell their one, their one why don't they just keep that one property and, and, and uh, get some money for a down payment, enough to buy another property, so now they have two properties. Um, most realtors, if they're not an investor, uh, the realtor is an investor, they think, well, just cash them out, let them do whatever they want with that cash, rather than saying, there are other ways to invest your money. Maybe you just you know, keep, keep the property and invest, uh, take the smaller down payment. Um, it's being creative is to be a creative problem solver. So you have your... You're, you're a detective. You're a detective for problems. And um, most realtors won't go that step further. They think it's almost, um, it's almost none of their business, you know? Like, I don't want to bug people by asking them too many questions. But when you take a new, um, a new client, a new listing, you should spend a little more time with each of them, finding out what are you going to do with the money? Um, what would solve this problem for you? What if you got less money quicker? What if you got 
more money over a longer period of time. Um, what, what, what is the problem you're trying to solve? Maybe it's because you're trying to buy another piece of real estate, you know? Um, how could we buy another piece of real estate and get you into another property and, and, and you keep these two? Uh, so uh, it's, it's just having a, putting on the, the problem-solving glasses. And most realtors don't do that. They, they, they're actually sometimes anxious to get a property listed. Mm. So they will, um, they will create a higher price just to make the seller, you know, list with them. And uh, I think if you're going to be a listing agent, find out what their problem is and help them solve it. And then find out the buyer who can solve that problem for you. That's amazing. And yeah, so to all our um, fellow realtors that are out there listening to this podcast, you have the power to change in your client's life through real estate. So be sure to be creative so you can do it in the best way possible. Thank you so much again, Robert, for this podcast and tune in for our next episode when we're going to find a way to highly motivated sellers in your area.